question is from Dress Fit. I get a lot of new clients believing the stay away from white simple carbs myth. Could you please explain the benefits of simple and complex carbohydrates and when it is beneficial to consume them? Yeah, this is, I think there's, this is communicated wrong. Um, and, and, I, and not only is it communicated wrong, but thing, foods get demonized for the wrong kind of reasons. So, you know, white bread, uh, you know, pasta, white, simple carbohydrate type of thing, we're told that make you store more body fat than other types of carbohydrates. Um, now, the truth is, and this is why there's people in our space who defend those foods so hard because they're, they're demonized in the wrong way. Um, ca excess calories make you gain weight, okay, at the end of the day. So if those excess calories come from white bread or they come from sweet potato or oatmeal, if they're excess calories, you're going to store them as body fat. So inherently, they're not necessarily more fattening. Now, from a health standpoint, they might not be as healthy for you. They might not have the same bioavailable nutrients. They may make you feel not as good. I know me, uh, if I eat really, really fast-acting type carbohydrates too often, I tend to not feel as good. I get energy crashes typically. Um, I don't get the rush. Everybody says, oh, you get an energy rush and a crash. I don't get that. I just eat it and then I get a crash afterwards where I want to fall asleep. And so I don't, I don't feel very good on them. So I tend to avoid them because of that. And you should too. Anything that makes you feel that way, I don't care what the food is, you should also avoid. But here's the big problem. Those simple carbs tend to come in the form of heavily processed foods. And those foods tend to make you want to eat more. And so if you eat a lot of white bread, it's probably, you're probably going to eat more calories overall than if you ate, you know, sweet potato or oatmeal or something like that. So that's, that's why I would say to avoid those types of foods. Yeah. I mean, and, there's, there's some positive sides to it. I, I happen to be in the camp with somebody when I was, especially when I was competing. Now I, I eat a lot less of it now, but when I was chasing calories and I, and I, and I needed more calories, it was hard for me to hit the caloric intake. Um, and I was really getting after my workouts I mean, some of my best workouts were after some of these carbs. I mean, it, I really would. I would I would load up on some pasta or something two hours before, and I'd have some of the most epic training sessions. So I think the, the advice that you give about really trying to evaluate yourself and pay attention to how how they make you feel. Like some mm -hmm. people may perform extremely well on them. If, if you're somebody who's – performs extremely well on them. You don't notice bloat from them. You don't have a major crash like Sal and you can manage the calories. There's They're great. There's nothing wrong with them, especially if you don't have any adverse effects to them. But they also seem to, this is where we, a lot of people end up having some sort of an intolerance to them. You get right. some people that have like you, Sal, who crash afterwards. Uh, they are tend to be a lot higher in calories, so it's hard to manage calories that way. So there's there are there, those are some of the drawbacks of that. So you just have to you have to ask yourself like, are you somebody who can have these things and and manage your calories and you get great workouts and you feel fine from them, or are you not? It's an individual experience at the Absolutely. end of the day, and that's you know what we're always trying to stick with that uh, because yeah, for me. I have noticed with most, a lot of my clients, it's been a similar pattern in terms of like some of these uh, types of carbs have, have created like intolerances and inflammatory experiences where they get like signals from their body that, you know, have adverse uh, sort of reaction to these types of foods, but that's not everybody. So it's not like a blanket statement of like avoid these. And, uh, you know, in terms of like, we just get so general with it because we try and steer people towards healthier habits. But, you know, you really have to assess at the end of the day whether or not this is good or uh, not a good option for you, specifically you. Right? Yeah, there's the splitting hair stuff too with these types of carbs too that tend to happen a little bit. Like, you know, eat this one post-workout and this one before your workout and this one at night and this one. I think there's a lot of splitting hairs with that kind of stuff and a lot of people in our space put more importance on that than I think needs to be done. I, I see guys doing like the gummy bears and pixie sticks uh, post-workout because wow. it replenishes their glycogen the dextrose. source. Yeah, faster. And so now they have an excuse to eat gummy bears and this is, you know, and really what percent impact is that having on your physique? Like none. Yeah, yeah. 0 0.1 or none, uh, probably nothing. Um, so I, I think, you know, when we're looking at these types of things, examine how does it make you feel is it healthier for you? Is it going to make you want to overeat? Those are the most important things. And then right. once you base it off of that, what you'll end up finding is most people probably will avoid 
a lot of those types of foods because in my experience that, that covers a lot of people. I, I, there's not too many people I've encountered where eating those types of foods uh, makes them feel good right. and they've got yeah. good health from them. It's not as common. 